Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we're going to learn all about mediumship and we're going to be talking to Nicole Stevens who is a medium and that is not the size of your clothing. It is actually <laughs> someone who is able to talk to uh, people who've passed on to other realms. So welcome Nicole. Hi, thank you for having me. So I wanted um, people, I was not familiar with mediumship um, until probably about three or four years ago. Tell for folks who aren't familiar who mediums are and what they do, tell us a little bit about what a medium is. A medium is someone who communicates with loved ones who have crossed over to the other side. And, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. You go ahead. Um, and, deli- you know, we deliver messages and content. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> and tell me, how, how did you know that you were a medium? When, how did it come about for you? I really didn't know. I saw spirit when I was about three. Mm-hmm. And I later found out that my grandmother um, was intuitive and a medium, and I had a whole family lineage of it. So it's a family trait. Ah, okay, got it. And when you were three, do you remember what happened that made you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a man in my room, and I was terrified. He wasn't, like, at the end of my bed. It wasn't like yeah, that, the cliche, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, but he was at the end. He was in my room, and his face, I could see his face very clearly, but I didn't recognize him, and I was only three. So yeah. I just saw a man's mm-hmm. face, and I froze. And I... You know, kept trying to look to see if I knew who it was, and I didn't. And the more I looked, he just faded away. But it was only his face, not his whole yeah. body. Wow, that's fascinating. And so that must have been creepy to see this kind of, mm-hmm. like, disembodied Ted <laughs> just floating. So did you talk to your mom, or how did you find out that that was a spirit? I rolled out of, well, I didn't um, until years later, but I had rolled out of bed and went into my parents' room screaming there was a man in my room. And my dad. Oh, my God. Yeah, and my dad ran in there and (laughs) nobody was in there. So I just slept on the couch for a while. Nobody believed really what I was saying. Well, so they didn't know that your grandma, they knew that your grandmother had these abilities was she still alive at the time? Yes, but it was very different back then. It was very hush-hush. I mean, everybody knew it, but you don't talk about it. We're old school, Catholic, Italian. Mm-hmm. In order to even see, you know, my great-grandmother, you had to know someone. It was like getting through Fort Knox to get up there. Right. So it was uh, just a very different time. And right. I, when I told my grandmother, I had heard that people were going upstairs for my great-grandmother. And I wanted to know what was going on. And my grandmother told me. And I told her things about myself. And she told me not to tell anyone. They would think I was a witch. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And so your grandmother said, don't tell anyone that you have those abilities, but you shared with your grandmother your experiences. Mm-hmm. And then she said, oh, honey, you are, you have these abilities. Did she explain mm-hmm. to you what was happening? Not like we do today. Yeah. You know, she basically said that we have premonitions and we know things. And don't, you know, don't tell anybody. You don't tell anybody about this. You don't talk about it. So think you're a witch. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. so did you at that point then shut it off or did mm-hmm. you, okay, so you're just like shut off that um, information <laughs> that came in and when did you decide to turn it back on? Um, well, throughout the years I still had experiences because I didn't really know how to deal with any of it. Right. Um, and so I, I, I guess, you know, toyed with it through high school and all of that, but it wasn't until around my brother's passing that... Oh. You know, I really acknowledged it and moved into that space of this is who I am. Wow. So your brother passed. Was that the part? Was he coming back and talking to you? Is that how you thought? Oh, okay. And I didn't know that we could. Well, I didn't realize, you know, I I knew that what I had seen, but I never thought that I had never lost anyone. So I never thought that, you know, connecting with our loved ones was possible. And I thought it was crazy. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah, I, I would be scared. How did you know that you weren't crazy and it was your real brother versus you and Matt? You know, because some people, when they're grieving, they feel mm-hmm. a loss. And I know when my dad passed away, I just kept on imagining talking to him, not knowing whether he was there or not, but I guess having a deep belief that he was regardless. Mm-hmm. How did you know that your brother I, was there? I didn't at first. And things were happening in my home that were just odd, you know, things yeah. were moving, or 
I would be doing things and I would be hearing, you know, Nicole, Nicole. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, and I really just thought I was in deep grief and I was not handling this well. Oh. And, and then when I started to really listen, I started to test him in a way. Yeah. I would ask him things that I knew that I didn't know the answer of. Oh, interesting. And, and then find out the answer and they, they were accurate. Oh, interesting. So you'd say, you know, tell me about something that I wouldn't know. And then you would go ask your mom or dad or whatever and find out that they're accurate. Interesting. So that was your proof that you were crazy, yeah. like you were collecting information. And at that time, did you know, were there such things as medium at that time or still? Um, don't? Yeah, but it, it just, it, I think that it's really opened a lot more in the past few years. Yeah. Well, because mm -hmm. I think that people they'll know about it. Like I talked to someone who's, uh, they were having a really hard time with someone who had passed. And I said, well, you know, you can go see a medium. Like, oh no, I'm not going to do that. But they knew what I was talking about, which I don't think in the past, like when my dad died probably 18 years ago, there were, I, I don't think people were talking about mediums at that point at all. Not really. I mean, not a lot of people spoke about them while I started, you know, or when I started, it wasn't until recently that I've heard more and more and more mediums coming out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. A whole uh, new age. <laughs> I know. So the, so tell me a little bit about your mediumship. So you actually can see and sense and dialogue. Is there, there's, I was reading up on the web and there's four different types of mediums. Yeah. There's mental mediums, trance mediums, physical mediums, and channeling. And I was wondering if you can set me through those different types. So what's a mental mediumship person do? So I'm a mental medium. So I see, I feel, and I hear. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't experience any physical changes within myself. When I connect, I'm in a state of alpha. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm just in a, a little bit of, I'm still with, you know, conscious, but just a little shifted, more right. um, similar to a very light meditation. Mm-hmm. If you move over into trance medium, your consciousness is altered deeper. It's more of a self-hypnosis, and you may experience more than likely you should be actually experiencing physical changes. Mm -hmm. So you'll experience things, um, your increased heart rate, you'll ex you can experience um, your voice may change mm -hmm. to spirits, you know, voice not so is that in that particular case when you actually said that you're going into a deeper trance um and i've seen james on prague i think this is what he does he he it's almost like that entity kind of merges with you and so the right. reason why you would experience a different heart rate is because you're experiencing the heart rate of that person or some combo is that what's happening I don't, honestly, I don't do trance medium, right. so I don't know if that is the correct reason why your heart rate would change. Your voice would change, but something is changing, but you're it allowing is. someone to like your body. occupy your body. Right. There's been, you know, echoplasm. There's a lot of different changes when you do physical mediumship or me um, trance mediumship, which what I don't do either. What, what is that? I just don't even know. Like, I remember Goo people talking gooey about Gooey looking... <laughs> I know it's but what is it, what's its purpose? Why is it there? I think when I was reading on the web, they said something like you're kind of shifting at some energetic yeah. level and that ectoplasm is an outcome of that. Like, I don't even know what that means. I, I, I personally, I think of it as a, like a phlegm type of yeah. substance. Yeah. <laughs> and so that thing kind of like floats around and what, so I don't even know what it is. So, so it's a phlegm substance that does what? I can't answer that for you. <laughs> I I'm not either. gonna lie. I'm not even okay. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't, I don't do any it. of it. So it, I just—it's not something I do. Yeah. Okay. Now there's physical physical mediumship, of which I've I've never witnessed on any of this. So I'm just kind of curious. Okay. Where, where people do apportation, which is like, the, what what is? That? It's very similar to trans mediumship. Okay. So I I would a deeper state. Yeah. I, um. Trans mediumship and physical mediumship go hand in hand. Okay, so, so they're, they're kind of, there's not really a distinction. Yeah. It's actually one and the same. And so I was talking to my girlfriend and she said, do you want to go see a physical medium? I'm like, what does that even mean? And she said, it's someone who like, they'll be like spitting out stones. I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, like, I mean, you mean like energetic stones or real stones? And she's like, real ones. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? 
I still don't I, get it. Have you ever seen a physical meeting? I have, but I didn't have that experience. They weren't spitting anything out. They definitely shifted the energy around them, got very, very cold. Oh, wow. um, their, the, her face really changed. Not that it, it didn't change, obviously, the way that it looked, but you could see a difference in her face. Wow. It, it was the most, um, it was a beautiful experience. It was very profound. Yeah. And she, her voice changed, but it was still her voice. It just, you know, if somebody has a voice that's very, very high and then it went very deep mm. and she was speaking very differently than she would with the terminologies mm. that she was using. Mm. I thought so, it was a wonderful experience. Yeah. So why do you think someone, like if someone were to ask someone if they are do trance or mental, or do you think that there are benefits of doing, talking to one type of medium than another, like... Uh, what what in what instances would you want to be looking for someone who does that physical mediumship versus mental mediumship? I know that physical mediumship they usually they'll work a lot with healing. Oh. So okay. they they want to take on spirit in order to help heal you. Oh, interesting. In the real in this plane, so they actually work Correct. with other one's physical body in order to do healing. That's fascinating. Even. So one would presume that person had healing in the prior prior life, or is it because now that they're for this other plane, they can have these healing abilities? My belief is that because they're from another plane, they are able to assist the medium into facilitating this healing. Wow, so. fascinating. Okay, and what is channeling? Because it, and I, it seems like to me, channeling and mental mediumship is the same. Yeah. They make distinctions. What? I think they're the same. If okay. you channel. You're channeling, you know, you're still the, the vessel. Right, so you're opening up and, and the what I saw when I was reading on the web is channeling is like when you can talk to higher entities. But I assume if you're a medium, you can talk to a deceased loved one or Gandhi or Jesus. or If they want to come through to you, they, then you will be able to. Oh, I see. You don't get to choose that. Oh, you don't. So you can't just say, like, I want to actually go talk to Gandhi. Like, it's whoever shows up, shows up. We don't, if I have a client coming to me, I always, right from the beginning, tell them I can never guarantee who will come through. Oh, interesting. Most of the time it is who they want to, but I could never guarantee that. I don't, it's not 1-800-HEAVEN, so I, you know, get... <laughs> And he to come through. Right, right. <laughs> Send him down. <laughs> right, so you don't know who... Okay, got it. So I want to ask a series of questions about the who in a second, but I do want to ask a little bit about... Um, I, I've seen... I had a, a, a video that I had with James on Prague, and there are people... The, um, the amount of hatred and vituperation towards him who I've actually met who I think is a wonderful kind person if you meet him he really comes from a heartfelt space but there are a lot of people who are like why would you believe that person they're a charlatan they told me something that was harmful um, I, I went to a medium and they told me something that was harmful because I'll say have you ever met James and they're like no but they kind of outcast all mediums as like charlatans, you know, say stuff that's wrong. Like, what do you think may be happening in those situations? I think that it's like any other profession that you have people that are ego based and they're, they're not that, that people, you know, mediums are ego mediums, not the clients, yeah. but the mediums are, are coming from ego and not from a, you know, um, for the highest good. And, you know, then they're not good. <laughs> Right. It's like any other profession. Okay. And why would, if someone came from ego versus, I assume, presume spirit, is that the other thing? That, if you wouldn't be coming from ego, where would you be coming to? I'm trying to figure out if someone heart. didn't want to experience. <laughs> ah, okay. So if, truth. You come from, uh, so if you come from heart and truth is different than someone that's coming through ego. And what right. does it mean if someone's coming through ego? If they're coming through ego, you know, their concern isn't the client. It's being accurate. It's making money. It's not serving. The, the components of being of service has been removed because it's, am I going to be good? Am I going to be wrong? They don't want to be wrong. They're putting all their own thoughts into it. And everything that we do as mediums is interpretation. So if you and I are both mediums and we have the same spirit coming through, we're going to interpret that information differently. Mm. And we always have to make sure that we're doing, you know, serving for the highest good. Okay, so that explains a, a 
a friend of mine from high school is a medium and she's also a Mormon. And so, you know, she's going to have a, fil- a kind of a Mormon filter on things. <laughs> and so some of the things that she was saying is I need to go check my ancestry. And I thought, wait, is that your Mormon part or is it really like, I don't understand how I know which it's coming from. Do you know what I mean? Everyone is so different when it comes to mediumship and how they work and how they connect. I don't connect with any of my ancestors. Do you say it? <laughs> ancestors. <laughs> yeah. I just made that word up. <laughs> I, I connect direct, straight to spirit. There's no middleman. I work with my team, my guides. Oh, and Okay, so you have a set of guides that then go and like, because that's what I heard too, is there are people who have guides that then you go ask, please go find, you know. Blankety blank. I don't work that way. I connect directly to spirit. But for myself and for my practice, I work with my team. So Um, prior to my session, I pray to my team. Spirit guides or people that support you. And what are you praying for them to do to like set up the space or make sure that you get the right people? What? Tell me a little bit just so people understand Uh, the practice. I ask them to guide me and protect me and protect my clients and allow me to deliver the most helpful healing messages for all, you know, harming none. I ask, you know, for divine guidance. I ask for spirit to come through loud and clear, accurate and correct for the good of all, harming none. You know, so I say my prayer to my, I call them a team, but right. uh, I got a whole team. Right. Um, so, right. Okay. So that's the kind of different. preparatory work that you do. And I actually, for the mediums that I know, they do, they'll either set the space or, you know, make sure that there's a protective bubble that, you know, it seems like everyone kind of does it slightly differently. Mm-hmm. So that's what you do is you set the space. And, and so if you were to try to go and see if a medium, you know, because it's hard because there's so many people out there who are claiming their mediums, all of which have very different skill levels and different abilities, all of who have healthy or unhealthy boundaries with their ego. Like they could be saying that same prayer and feel like they're coming from the heart, but honestly are coming from someplace else. So what would you, what could you ask a medium so that you could find one that is coming from the heart versus ego? Well, I think the first thing is to get referrals. Mm-hmm. You know, you probably don't, you know, 1-800-PSYCHIC might not be the best right, right. <laughs> place to look. You know, referrals are going to be the best form of information for you okay. because if somebody else went to them and they were accurate, accuracy is what you're going for, right? You want to know that you're communicating with your loved one. Right. Um, I don't think there's, you know, a standardized set of questions that you can ask, but there's different things to look for within the medium when you make the session. For example, if no one is coming through, Mm -hmm. the medium should tell you that no one's coming through. I know for myself, I refund. If nobody came through, I'm not going to charge somebody. Oh, that's kind. That's That's standard (laughs) practice for me. Not everyone does that, but that's actually an ethical thing, right? Like sometimes like if you're truly going to be in the Mm -hmm. right space where you're not in that ego place where you're like, hey, they paid me money. I don't want to have to meet with them again. But to say, hey, no one showed up, so well, I'll give you a refund. I can't make it up in law. <laughs> right. I mean, I guess I could, but that wouldn't. that's not how I work. Yeah, interesting. So if somebody didn't come through, I'm honest with them. If the information is a little bit scattered, I tell them, you know, and I also will tell them when I know that this is the information that I'm receiving. Right. I don't ask them questions, you know. And and I don't want them to tell me anything prior to my session. If you go into a session and, and the medium immediately says, who do you want to connect with? Oh, is that your mom? You know, right. it should roll like that. Oh, I see. Because that person is information digging. Because if they know that their mom, your mom, it's like, oh, she wants to tell you that she loves you. Your right. great daughter. Or like makes up okay. some, some kind of contrived thing based on what she presumes you want to hear. Right. And you want validating information. So they should be delivering you, val- delivering, uh, it's been a long day, <laughs> delivering validating information to you that, that is very significant to you, not your mom loves you. I mean, yes, that can be included in the message, but there should be substantial pieces of information that, that is evident that this is your mom. You know, your, your mom had an emerald ring that she gave you prior to her passing. And that's not on the internet. It's nowhere to be found. Only right. you know that. Right. So you should have pieces of validating information. And if you don't feel comfortable, tell the medium. medium and if they are, you know, ethical, and they're going to tell you, 
you know, if you're saying this doesn't make sense to me, they're going to say, okay, well, you know, it is possible that someone else is coming through for my next reading. And, and at that point, they make the decision whether or not do you want to reschedule or do you want to refund. Uh, I see. So ethics mean like, so the ethical things that you do is just admit when someone doesn't show up and say like, or it could be someone else that's showing up and just. That has happened to me before. I've had spirit come through that on one session and it, they really didn't go until three, you know, later. Oh. So wow, That's crazy. That's fascinating. Like, how do you think they even know that you're about to do a reading? Like, do you think energetically something, even though there's this time and space thing, somehow that person knows like, oh, you know, the door is open. <laughs> yeah, they, they set they it all show. up. They Who's, set it all up. Who sets they it all up? They see us as a light and they just go to the light. <laughs> <laughs> You mean they see a medium as light and they just go mm -hmm. to the light? They don't know me as Nicole. They just say, oh, she's got the connection to that one, you know, wow. to my mom or my sister. And Wow. And they just like, she's open. I'm going yep. up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and sometimes they pop in when I don't have a session. Right. You know, it happens. Right, because they see the light. Okay, mm -hmm. here's some, um, some follow-on questions from the listeners. So how do we know if you're practicing the right way and being truthful? I think that that's, they'll admit that right. they aren't. Right. Because you would reach someone on the other side if they don't want to communicate. If, the, if they don't want to communicate, they're not going to come through. So they're not going to, yeah, so, so the answer is no. Like, they'll just right. say, like, I don't really want to talk to. And why do you think, or because they don't communicate, do you ever have a sense of why they don't communicate? If they weren't big communicators here, they're probably not going to be there. They don't change <laughs> their personality. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, if they were very, very quiet, it's it's always interesting because if they're very, very soft-spoken, for me, they come through very, very soft-spoken. But that would be evidential as well, including other information. Mm -hmm. But if your dad was very, very, very quiet and I came through saying, or I, you know, told you, he is so energetic and yeah, wants yeah, like, this, this, and yeah. you'd say, that's not my dad. But if I said he was very soft and very quiet and his energy was very humbling, I could, you know, he's very nurturing, mm -hmm. then you would resonate with it. Mm -hmm. So it makes a difference in our, in our you know, on our end, mm -hmm. how they appear to us. And then someone says, what information do you need to give to a medium to connect with someone? And you're saying nothing. Nothing. I just need a first name so I can speak to you. But if you don't want to give me that, you don't have to. <laughs> like I'd have to say I'm CJ. But like yeah, if I didn't want to. That's if I, it. it. Because if you're skeptical, you're like, she knows everything. She did research on yep. me. She knows. You can just say, well. I, I love know. a healthy skeptic, but I will not be tested in that respect. I can tell if someone's trying to test me. I'm not a circus show. But um, I love a healthy skeptic who's open you know, to the possibility. But... All I ever get is the name and the phone number. First name and the phone number or first name and then they're meeting me. Wow. I don't okay. get any information. That's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so it says, do you connect with an individual person or do they talk through a guide as well? Interesting. I only, I connect straight to spirit. I don't go through a middleman. Right. Like you said. Every medium is different with that as well. I have several colleagues that go through a guide. I just okay. don't. Yeah, you talk directly to mm -hmm. spirit. And you're not talking about spirit, the spirit that comes through, right? Are you well, talking to the? Can you talk to spirit? I could just be talking to like the ethers of spirit. You're talking about the spirit of a particular person right. showing up. I just want to clarify because okay, I yeah. don't know how you guys work. Okay, <laughs> um, you asked how do they know you're legit? I think we've talked about that. So should we tell medium much? And I'm hearing no. You don't have to if they're. If no, they're going to be ethical, be. you don't have to. Do you think it should be relatively close to the setting the appointment to going so no one does research on you? Um, well, that you can't really I don't, control. I, yeah, I don't really think that that would make a difference. If they're going to do it, they're going to do it. Yeah, okay. You know, And, and they're going to tell you information that you know is just always trust your gut. Because right. the information that they're giving you you'll know it was in the obituary, for example. Right. <laughs> I had a client, this, no, this is really, really bad. I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm a bereaved mom. Oh, no, and yeah. um, my 11-year-old son passed away five years ago, oh, unexpectedly. And I, I work with a lot of bereaved parents. And so I had a mom call me and she was, wouldn't say anything. I mean, it was, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And which was fine, but I could tell there was ambivalence. You know, mm -hmm. after the session, 
she said, oh, like, I know that was my son. And, and she said, I have to tell you about my experience. And this is why I was so, you know, I wouldn't, you know, tight lipped and I wouldn't speak about anything. And I said, what happened? And she said, I went to a well-known medium and she told me information that wasn't, it wasn't true, but I knew that she had found it. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, but I was a little confused by that statement. And she said, she told me information out of his obituary, yet the obituary printed, the newspaper had printed the wrong information. <gasps> oh, my and, goodness. Oh, that's so sad. So she was just. Mm. So she really, really wanted to connect with this. And it took her a long time before she ended up scheduling something with me. Wow. And she was, it was very, um, just because she hadn't said anything, I could feel her energy was right. so. She had so much anxiety, which rightly so. Right. Um, oh, God. Oh, that's so awful. Okay, so um, I think we answered all the listeners' questions. And the other one was, okay, who you connect to, which I talked about before. So when you're connecting, you said you're directing, talking directly to that spirit. And then, um, and like you said, you're, you can't necessarily guarantee that you're going to speak to that loved I one. I can never guarantee it, ever. Okay. And when you talk to that person, um, is that person pretty, like you had said that their personality, their personality in the afterlife will be very similar to the personality in, in their real life. So you'll be able to kind of tell. It's not like, uh, you know, they, they pass as a woman and they're like, hello, I'm a man well, now. <laughs> they, they show me themselves as you know them. So for example, I know that some of my colleagues, they one in particular, she always says, I see spirit in their heyday. I didn't even know what that meant when she yeah. said. Um, but for myself, the way I see spirit is the way you knew them here at, you know, whenever they had passed. So, for example, if you had a child that passed, they're not going to come through at 35 right. because you wouldn't connect with that. Uh, I see. Got it. So, but someone, no. who said, someone who I know that's claims to speak to medium said they may at, at that time they may actually like you said their heyday where they would like they are like I particularly like how I looked and felt at 28 and because they're no longer physical form they could just transmute themselves into the, what they look like at 28 even though they may have passed at 65 right so but if they pass at 65 and I was that's the last time I saw them they come in at age 65 not in their heyday at correct okay for me for you, you know right and everyone I'm sure is different um, and then, you know what, in, when you talk to like the ghost buster realms, like they're always saying like they're disembodied spirits and even with shamanism, they talk about these wayward spirits or even um, in certain indigenous cultures, there are certain people who spirits decide not to cross over to the other realm so that they can watch their families and protect them. Who have you seen these beings? Who who are these I people? Have been, I think that you know we're all energy and we all have a different vibration. Mm -hmm. And even as mediums, we're going to connect with whatever vibrational level we're on. Um, for myself, I I don't I'm, I don't not that I don't believe in ghosts, but nine out of ten times it's a loved one trying to get your attention, trying even if they're scaring you a little bit, right. um, and they're really not there to hurt you. Okay. I was recently in Europe, and the building I was in was extremely haunted. Mm -hmm. We actually got locked in our room. Oh, no. <laughs> and, you know, and I had said this was an old um, military uh, hospital of like, rehabilitation, and I did find out that it was, and, and I was seeing a lot of spirits in there. But they just, you know, it's their home base, so to speak. They were just right. playing around with us, and for me, it's unacceptable, so... You either need to tell me your message or you need to be gone. <laughs> Let okay, me so have you because like you, know, you see your light, right? And so that light will affect lower vibrational energy and higher vibrational energy. So if you actually get that kind of like, hey, I saw the light. Know that you're open. <laughs> How's it going? You know, you just kind of, how do you ask that spirit to go away? Or do you just say, go away? And they go away. I say, leave. Our energy is always stronger than theirs. Uh, and I think that's what people get. Vibrational energy. Uh, and I, our, our energy is always stronger than any spirits. Right. We just, you know. And then I've also heard of people who said, I actually just recently got someone who said, you know what? I feel like I'm haunted. I feel like I'm haunted by some something. What do you know when have you had other people who come in to see you because of that? And generally, what do you find when people feel that sense of being haunted? If it's if they've had a loved one cross, 
It's usually their loved one. From my experience, I haven't had anyone just saying I'm haunted and they haven't had anyone who's crossed. Oh. But I'm not going to attract that type of clientele or vibration either. Oh, if that okay. makes sense. Yeah. Okay, got it. So it's just not, and I'm not saying one's better or worse or good no, or bad. No, it's just whatever's happened. Like in shamanism, if someone is actually in this the state of like, a, they have cycle pumps that mm. if you have a wayward energetic spirit that doesn't know where to go or they're confused or they have like, like unfinished business, they'll just kind of continue to float around, which is what I think may be happening when people feel that, but I don't know. I like to think of it as, you know, you have different friends, right? Mm -hmm. And with each friend, you have a different type of relationship and some are really, really close with and others, you know, you just kind of go to the gym with, right. or, but not, right. and it's the same with spirit in our energy. So mm -hmm. we're going to attract the same thing you're going to have, you know, like there's, right. there's a different vibration. Wow. It doesn't mean that any are good or bad. It's just right. wherever you are in your life. Right. That's interesting. Okay, so that would make sense to me um, why um, why someone would actually be, because, you know, there are people who are really into this whole Ghostbusters thing, and they go to haunted houses looking for ghosts when they can banish them. I don't even know what they're doing. To me, that sounds like I would have no interest in doing that at all. Um, <laughs> okay, and then, um, so... Do you know sometimes, like, when you're connecting, do you know that it's an actual person versus, like, an ascended master or Gandhi? Like, do they usually self-identify so you know who you're? So uh, I personally, I haven't connected with Gandhi. I don't know. He's been busy when I'm <laughs> <laughs> going to James, you right. know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So who else shows up from the reading? Is it generally that per someone in that person's family? Okay, yeah. it's not going to be like well, a friend or, or it could no, be a friend or be. family. I've had the dentist come through <laughs> in the past. <laughs> no, it's, it's whoever chooses to come through. They have different connections. You know, we all have different connections with different people in our lives. And, and the dentist, for example, maybe they weren't close here, but they had a past life experience together, and they had to meet again in this lifetime. So, you know, he came through again to tell her a few things, which was really interesting and you know, it really helped her. <laughs> it's funny. She's like, hey, you need to brush twice. I mean, yeah. what does the dentist say? Is the dentist saying, like, stuff that was relevant to their relationship? Or is the dentist saying something that's relevant to her life in a more meaningful way or his life? Oh, both. <laughs> okay, because I actually had my grandmother and, you know, I'm waiting for this profound message from my grandmother. And she's like, you need to wear red nail polish. I'm like... <laughs> Seriously, this is the this is the message that you're gonna convey. I mean, no offense if you're hanging around here, but it's like, okay, so um, so that so well, they may be they could be they could communicate and conveying all sorts of information. It doesn't have to be profound. It doesn't have to be for your healing. It's just whatever they want to say. They have it's eight hundred la line, and, and they want you to know that they're around. And that yeah. they're eternal. You know, our love is eternal, that they didn't go away, that love transcends. Mm. You know, and, it, and and her saying, for everyone is different, again, it's interpretation. So if your grandmother had told me, if she kept showing me the color red, which I'll acknowledge I know it's, you, the name of your show is Fire, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire it up. So red for me is fire. It's energy. It's a very high energy. So I may have interpreted that had I not known fire, we'll say that. Right. But to you, I would have been saying, I, I feel like she's acknowledging fire to me. And then you may have connected that with your show as she's seeing my show. Uh, but it depends on our interpretation. So. Right. So kind of that's, again, where the interpreter who's delivering the message. So in some ways, you have to find someone who is kind of egoless, right? And who's right. not going to be interjecting their own story or like you'd want to find out about that person to know what their story is like the friend of mine who's a mormon who is injecting mormon like stories that made me then question the whole mormon story related i, I can't put any of my thoughts into it because it's not me right and it's not about me it's about my clients and about spirit and my first right. responsibility is to my client and i work for spirit if that makes sense yeah no it does <laughs> i it does. can't put my junk into it right okay now, when you connect to someone, and I think you were saying this earlier, and I just wanted to clarify. So I have a dear friend whose husband has passed, and I have a dad who's passed. And so I'll often talk to my dad, 
either in my head or out loud, assuming that he's there. Do you feel like spirits hear us when we're talking to yeah, them? Yeah, they absolutely hear us. And they often come through in sessions saying the things, you know, I heard you saying X, Y, and Z to me, and I want you to know that. Oh, wow. So that you know that there is a dialogue. Because sometimes you feel like, I'm crazy. Like, I don't know what's happening, but there's like some part of me that feels calm and <laughs> assured because I'm talking to what, you know, my mind, my version of you. But they actually really do hear you. Okay. That's very cool. I just got chills. Okay. <laughs> and do you think you can connect to like past life versions of yourself or like, like what's in the realm of possibility of who shows up? Uh, for me, when I connect, it's with your loved ones from this lifetime. Yeah. And my theory is I completely believe in a past life. Yet, I don't really get too concerned with my past life or anyone else's right. or my parallel lives. I'm just kind of trying to make it in this one. <laughs> Let's not get so complicated here. <laughs> right? If we complicate things. Just focus on the here. <laughs> focus okay. on the now. Okay, there are a bunch of questions that we have. So let me actually, um, let me go back. Um, okay, so I think we answered. Uh, okay, um, so then one was, do you, so I think you'd answer this before. Do mediums always have contact with the spirit world or can you turn it off? I turn it off. Okay, so it's a, it's like an on and off switch. Is that how it feels, or is it like how does yes. it through? They sometimes seep through. They sneak in, <laughs> but for the most part, I turn it off and on. I can't walk around open all the time. I would be crazy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see. When booking with the medium, should you give them a name of who you want to get in touch with ahead of time? Until oh. go in, or don't give them because otherwise they could do research, like you said. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I guess if you wanted to, but I wouldn't. I would want to know who came through. You know, just allow right. the process to happen organically. Right. If I said I wanted to talk to David, and then David shows up, then I'm like, how do you know? Yeah. You don't really know. Okay. That's the. That's um, why you reward or happy with the haptic, ha, uh, the skeptic. You know, because mm -hmm. like how you know you should know if, if the spirit comes up. Okay. Right. Okay. Um. Um. Okay, so then the other question is, and, and I think you had said, alluded to this before, so, you know, spirits are coming in, they're conveying messages, sometimes ones that you don't understand or that you find are strange or that you may wonder that are hurtful. So how do you, what are the ethics involved with translating or do you just translate all of it? Um... Do you mean a or like yeah, like a spirit? Let's say the spirit came in and said, "I always hated your haircut, and I still hate it." You know, like they come out and you hear it pretty clearly, and you don't want to say that, or do you? Say I would it? say they're laughing at your haircut, <laughs> 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 or they're not a fan. Okay, you know, it's all in your deliverance. It doesn't mean that you change what is being said, but you can deliver it in a gentle way yeah. okay, instead of being. You know, unless, like, and sometimes I will say, especially with um, older women, they sometimes they're, you know, just very spunky and they like to say things. And I'll say, well, do you want me to just say it like she's saying it? And I will just spill it out. And right. they're like, that's exactly what she would have said. <laughs> I can't filter it. Right. You know, but um, I did have one experience. I was really uncomfortable. I had sisters and one of the sisters' husband had passed. Mm -hmm. And... So this, the wife with her sister came to see me. Well, the sister and the husband had been hooking up. <laughs> That's so <laughs> uncomfortable. I, I was really uncomfortable. Uh, but I had to kind of ignore what he was saying because my responsibility is to my client and to be of love and light, and that would have been really bad. Right. So and that's where, you, you know what, it's not about being right. It's yeah. about being truthful, but you have to have – some etiquette in what you deliver. So and there, that would have just hurt everyone case? involved. What did you do in that case? Where you heard I told the other messages and I kept, when I was speaking to him mentally, telling him to move on, move on, we're not going there. Like it just wasn't happening. Okay, got You're like, I'm not delivering that message. Mm -hmm. Okay, got So they you don't can... get pissed off and leave. They're just kind of like, no. oh, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever, if you're not going to deliver my message, just yeah. like I say, then forget it. Okay. <laughs> um, what? Just what information can you get? Oh, so what kind of information can spirits tell you? Like, do they really give information up or what kind of stuff? What Do you find like there's a general theme? Like when I saw James from Prague, I was also like, they want to tell you that they love you. Like there was, that seemed to be like the theme. 
I mean, they do, but I've heard so many different things. The things that they don't tell you is probably easier for me to tell you. Yeah. They do not tell you the lottery numbers. They do not tell you your future. Okay. They do not tell you about your soulmate. I have to clarify this all the time in sessions that, you know, they'll say, well, I, I don't know what to do. Where am I going? Unless they're telling me, you know, that's a psychic reading and it's very different. Mm -hmm. Spirit isn't here to tell you your future. This is your journey. So mm -hmm. they're not here to condemn you or judge you what are they there for are they are they there, they're there to help you like do they know anything about your life more than you know about your life at that moment i think to a certain extent but i don't think it's their job to tell you because then you wouldn't be living your life ah uh, okay got it. so they're just more it's almost like what you would have is a conversation with them about whatever is coming up for them like so let's say they saw you um you know, that you were like uh, worried about a boyfriend, like you said, is this boyfriend my soulmate? And they heard you asking, what do you think of this boyfriend? They may come down and say, yeah, I heard you asking about the boyfriend and here's what I think. But it doesn't mean because they're saying this then or in real life, is there any more import to them saying it in real life versus in spirit life? They don't predict the future any more than we do. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, but it's not... Because they're more an angel or passed to this other mm -hmm. spirit, does that make them any more knowledgeable or any better than they were when they were the advice that they give on this plane of reality? I do believe that it does, or they, they are more knowledgeable and they'll give little increments of it. Yet, they're not going to tell you the whole scenario okay. because that's your journey. It's your soul contract. It's things that you have to go through because that's why you're here. Uh, is that because they have... Um, muffles like they can't say something like if they say like i think it's like in the future like <laughs> like, like what <laughs> they get a taser <laughs> they get a taser whatever they get into like realms that they're not supposed to share like, i you know it's really up to them there's no rhyme or reason with spirit but i did have a client that um and i'm friends with her as well and her dad came to me telling me that she was going to be blindsided oh, no. and he was very concerned about this and so I called her and I told her and she didn't really know what it meant or anything. The next day, I mean, he told more things, a very validating information about where she was, her location. She was out of the state and all of that. And the next day, exactly what he said happened. So he was trying to protect her from right. what was about to transpire. But it's really up to spirit on whether or not they choose to. Okay, that particular spirit, whether they choose that information right. or not. Interesting. Okay. Um, so this was another follow-up. Do you ever get a strange message from the spirit world? And if such, what was the strangest message you ever received? I love that question. Um, I, it would have to be about the true sister. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was pretty awkward. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if we, so, the next question is: If we live in a parallel universe, can we get messages from our other selves? I think we were talking about that self, like mm -hmm. our past lives. And that's not what you do, so you don't really know. Or no, and I would think that you wouldn't know, anyways, because you'd actually have to know who your past, who you were in the past life, in order to be able to understand who the person is coming through. So, for example, if I said to you, "Cindy Lou's coming through," right, and I was telling you information, you would say, "Who, who is that?" Right. <laughs> so oh, I get it. Knowledge, you wouldn't know. Right. right. You know, actually, I interviewed one person who does so the person who asked that question. I did this interview with someone who talks to people in past lives and she says that there's a multiverse in which many different versions of yourself including versions today are running around you know and you can talk to them and I was like <laughs> wow <Yeah>. you know <laughs> okay so um the other question I think it was related to the thing we were talking about before so do spirits get mad like you're like I'm not going to tell them about that so do they get mad or, <laughs> what not at me they don't get mad at you you don't think they may get mad but they're not going to get mad at you there's no emotion over there. It's not the same. Right. It, okay. It's not like our earthly emotions. Right. Okay, so when you're connecting, where do you think you're connecting to? Like, is there a hell and a heaven? Like, what? what is it? What are the different realms? Like, I've talked to very spiritual people. They talk about all these complicated layers and stuff. Where, do, mm -hmm. you, do you see that here, or do you even believe that? Um, I believe there's a spirit world. And that's and it, <laughs> whether there's that, an astral or I don't believe a in, celestial I, I personally whatever. don't believe in hell. 
my seven-year-old, well, at the time, my son was seven. He's now 13, but he had told me about levels. And he obviously didn't know anything about levels. My son here, not the one who passed. Oh, okay. Um, and he told me about levels. How, and is that because he's... he's is he a medium? Oh, too? yes. He okay. I was like, how does he know about this? Yeah. Well, that's what I said. How do you yeah. know about it? And he actually told me that his brother, Zachary, who passed, told him. He said, I don't. Zachary told me. Wow. So, you know, I I somewhat believe in levels. Yeah. But I don't, you know, we all cross. And we have, you know, growth over there. Our soul continues to grow. We continue to raise our consciousness. So, we work over there as well. Yeah, you know, I've talked to this guy who did astral projection, and I've talked to James on Prague, and what they believe, and, you know, I don't know what to believe, but what they said is that the level that you're in is related to the consciousness that you had when you pass. And so if you're mm-hmm. fear-oriented, there's a hell kind of place, you may go there. Like, if you're mm-hmm. not, you don't go there. And, and so it's really about, even if you do go there, it's about transcending that space regardless, because there's nothing that's holding you in the hellish like space, except your own consciousness. Right. right? That's and, I mean. and that's why I say that, you know, I don't believe in hell because it, it's not technically this, when you say hell, you think of this big place of fire, right? you know, you just think right. of fire the arms and going up scary place right. and you know if you some of my clients if i ever said you know they're at a lower level a little bit you know they, they need to transcend and right. work on some stuff they they kind of yeah you'd freak you know, out you're like oh like, no you know, yeah they're all over there they're all right. fine <laughs> right don't worry about levels they're fine they're just right? doing the thing that they need to do okay um oh, let's see let me see if i have any other questions uh Okay. Any other things that you learned about that have kind of just surprised you? Like, um, so you talked about your son talking about levels. Are there any other things that you've learned about the world, the spirit world that you're like, gosh, that, that thing really shocked me when I found that out. Just how in sync we all are. Like how many, how, how the synchronicity of things that happen with spirit it's so divine, the divine timing of things and the messages that they send. And I don't mean through a medium, just, you know, it's through numbers or you know, messages of on a computer, you know. Mm-hmm. The synchronicity in itself, you just go, oh, my gosh. How did, like, I can't even believe that happened. Can you give me an example of what you mean? Like- um, I've had a lot of experiences. Let me think of one. I I was really afraid to go to London, not because of everything that had happened. It was just, you know, I was going there by myself and meeting somebody there and this whole thing. And, you know, I, I was just kind of calling out to my team and my son and just saying, like, I need, I hope I'm doing the right thing. Is this the right thing? And I have a particular number that's really significant to me. And as soon as I got there and they gave us our room key, it was that number. Wow. And I just felt like, I mean, that's something small. I was trying to think of something quick, but right. that was just... For me, that was huge. Right. So I just was so like, yes. Are, like they're giving, it's almost like you're, like when you're talking to them, you're looking for validated signals that you've mm-hmm. caught, like uh, that you're talking to the right person and that they're really legit. And they're, and in that case with the number, they're saying like, yeah, we heard you and you're yep. safe. And That's people will awesome. debunk that and think whatever that they choose to. I choose to embrace it, and the more I embrace it, and I find that a lot of my clients do, it's ebb and flow. You know, it just starts just going, and and you go, I just can't make this shit up. Like, wow. It's so wild. You mean like... Once you do believe it, then they're like, oh, she's, she's gotten the code. She's got she it. She knows that. So we're going to send her more messages now that we know we can communicate with her. And do you feel like when you're talking to your son, is there sometimes part of you that's like, is that my ego? Because I want to hear him say that. I don't want to talk to him. You the way do? people think. No. And, and that's part of the reason because I can't be objective. Yeah. I know my own birthday, you know, I know his. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So I do think that I'm talking, you know, it's just my my own voice saying, Mom, I love you. The only time I have had an equal, I've had a couple of experiences with him, but he told me things for my husband that I didn't know. So I knew it was validating. And I was terrified. I had texts him 
you know. <laughs> yeah, is this true, honey? Wow, yeah. so that's how you knew that. Wow, I'm hearing from yeah. my, um, all right, so here's a couple of their questions related. When you lost, when you lost your child, did you shut down and push away your gift or did you embrace it and fine tune it? You know, that's an interesting question that, um, and then, so the first two weeks maybe, I was very, very angry because I had it, something had happened prior to that. I, it was nothing physical or anything. I just felt something was off and I didn't get any more information. So I was angry. You know, why didn't, you know, they tell me something? I help others and I can't help my own family. So I was really, really angry for, it was mm. about two weeks. And, and not that I said I wasn't going to do this work anymore. I just kind of, it was only two weeks. Yeah. And I got an email and it was from someone I know, and her nephew is very sick. And she said, my nephew needs your help. He has terminal cancer, and can you please go help him? And I just sat at my computer looking at it, thinking, not good things you know, that I can repeat on here. Yeah. Like, basically, how dare you? My son just passed, and you're asking me to help somebody. Right. And I pushed the computer away. I got up. I didn't respond to her or anything, but I got up, and I went to go walk away. And it was as if a force pushed me like to stop. And I just kind of stopped in the middle of my kitchen. Like, I really didn't know what happened. And I turned around. I went back. I wrote back to her. And I said, yes, let me have his information and I'll meet with him. And so I met with him and spent a lot of time with him. And it was an experience that I'll never, ever forget. He helped me through some of my grief. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness oh that's yeah. so sweet and so that was the thing that you knew wow I mean I need to go back and do this work even as pissed off as I am now I understand yeah. why this happened oh, that's a I choose story. you know I have I guess somewhat of a motto I choose to be better not bitter yeah bit isn't gonna help anyone mm. okay so we're gonna wrap up tell us if people wanted to get a reading from you uh tell us about your website how do they how do they go about doing it? And I know, before I forget, I know in um, New Hampshire, in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, where you're around where you're from, you're going to be doing a reading on February 27th. So if people wanted to talk to their loved ones, they could go there at the Wolfboro Inn and Wolf's Tavern. So, But tell us about your website and how people can find you. Um, they can go to my website on NicoleStevens.com or any social media. My handle is Nicole Stevens. Okay, and it's N-E-C-O-L-E. Um, yeah, Stevens. <laughs> Yeah, versus, and Stevens is S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S. Right. Okay, got it. So they could go to NicoleStevens.com or find you on Facebook. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much Thank for you being so much. here. Yeah, that was really interesting. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Great questions out there. Thank you, listeners. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support, love, and blessings.